and welcome to a, a cargo marathon video. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, the third uh, cargo marathon video I'm doing. I'm kind of, uh, well, I think, you know, running around uh, uh, empty cars on the layout. Well, that's cool, but uh, it's even cooler if it has cargo, which looks prototypic and nice, which can be on and offloaded at destinations. So that's what we're aiming for today. And we have a wooden theme for this marathon, uh, meaning everything from timber to, you know, ready-made products from, from your carpentry or whatever factory you have, either on your layout or in one of the terminal stations. So let's get to it. A majority of the cargoes we're modeling in this uh, marathon will be removable and then the empty car will show its wooden deck. And then there are some tweaks you can do to improve the appearance of that. Easiest way is to remove the boards around the gondola if possible. If not then well then you have to work it the way it is. This one was removable, so quite easy. Then I use a 120 grit uh, sanding paper to uh, engrave some, well, I'll say wooden texture into the board. So I'm moving the sandpaper only in direction of the grain of the wood. And then it will look something like this. Another thing you can do uh, to improve the appearance of a wooden deck is to alter the color of some of the planks in wooden deck. Uh, for this I use uh, three different shades of uh, we'll say aged wood in different stages. Basically it's just a light, a medium and a darker shade and I paint a random number of planks in each of these. Leave that to dry properly and then once dry we can paint it over with the first layer of kind of yellowish fresh wood color leave that to dry again and then paint it over with a, a second more dark wood color and finally a really dark wood color now once properly dry we're gonna sand the board with a soft sponge this is a, a like a 400 grit soft sponge and I'm typically just sanding the board where the cargo has been placed. So mainly in the center of the board. The more you grind or sand on one surface, the further down through the layers of paint you'll get. So the more you sand, the brighter the paint will look like. And when you sand kind of randomly where the cargo can be in support, supposed to be in, it looks like this. So now we have completed the board. Now I'm just weathering the, the reverse side, the underside of the, the car as well. So it's just not nice and shiny when you turn it around or at the sides. And then we're about done. You can snap back the sides of the the this uh, gondola corrosion can also be added to the sides per your liking these are kind of new and fresh so why not this will be the final appearance for these cars all right so let's get over to the first type of cargo it's log or timbers i have uh, previously described how to make timber uh, realistic timber in another tutorial if you're interested in that then uh, check out the video description there is a link there to that video once the timber has been processed on the sawmill there will be a level of scrap from each log that scrap is typically shipped by trains eh, to power plants where it's burned and made into energy. To duplicate this I'm using grass and grass straw. So I'm removing the seeds from the grass and then I cut the grass straws to about 20 millimeters which is a bit less than one inch. So. I cut all of this so it creates a large pile of 20 millimeter long grass straws on my table. Now we need to run these uh, pieces through a blender. So get that blender up in the kitchen 
And uh, yeah, I took the brand new blender we have. Don't tell my wife. And I run all of the grass through that. Then uh, I'm uh, separating this uh, through a household sieve to get the finer pieces. And those will be glued first. And then the more coarse parts on top. Now in real life, in my area, the this material is typically transported in covered cars like these uh, gondolas with uh, removable lids and in germany they have uh, these type of cars it's very similar at a bit lower boards and the modern cars are also a bit different but they're all covered we we don't typically want that <laughs> because we can't see the cargo then so you know for me I prefer using open gondolas like this. It's not entirely prototypic, but uh, I think it gives the best effect. And uh, well, the base material for for this uh, for this cargo can be either cardboard or balsa. I'm using here or plywood, whatever you have available at home uh, at the low cost or no cost. I have a lot of balsa left since I did aero modeling. So I'm just grinding off to make it a bit round. I use um, PVA glue, which is equivalent to Elmer construction. And I cover this uh, piece of balsa richly with that. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to put it on a piece of plastic foil so we don't mess up our gondola and then i start with that uh, fine particles first and then i cover the top with uh, the more coarse we got from the blender and then i spray spray with the isopropanol mix water and then i use landscape glue this is uh, basically pva glue which is thinned with 50 percent water if the landscape glue do not float well into that uh, grass straws, you can spray additional isopropanol over it. Now, this is a, a mix of water and um, flat brown paint, which I've made into a thin kind of wash. I will use this to darken the color somewhat of, of the grass, thereby tweaking the color very close to what the prototype looks like and with this done you can just insert this into your gondolas and we're ready for transport so if you have a sawmill anywhere along the line or in the end of the lines of your layout this is uh, excellent cargo very low cost easy to make and very good looking another nice cargo is uh, lumber stacks and they are best made using 3d print we're going over to cg trader and in the search window enter det 3 which is lumber mega set the set includes both uh, old style handmade uh, stacks uh, mostly transported on flatbeds and modern style which uh, is expected to adding a kind of strap around and then it looks like this. So I download that, I put it on a USB memory stick, put that into the 3D printer and just hit print. And off we go. And after like an hour, we have our first lumber stacks coming out. The good thing with these stacks is that all the planks are partially moved slightly. So you get a really, really realistic appearance of of these stacks even though they're made in plastic so the CAD engineer who been working this in blender has been doing a really good job now to paint this we're using three colors which we will mix in different ways it's a flat yellow white and burnt amber and the poor proportions of each you can see here so it's a kind of two-third of white, one-third yellow, and a drop of that burnt amber brown. I'm gonna airbrush this onto my lumber stack, so I'm thinning the paint slightly before I 
pour it into the airbrush but it's definitely possible to paint these lumber stacks using a paintbrush i prefer using a flat paintbrush for that so here i'm putting them up on my paint stick which is uh, just a rectangular wooden stick with the double side adhesive on top and then i'm spraying these with this acrylic paint now leave this to dry properly because we're going to put a layer of wash on top to enhance the contours between each of the planks plus the ends so i'm using odorless turpentine here and kind of grayish wood color which i'm thinning a lot so i'm applying this also with a flat wide brush now you can use acrylic paint here as well but please remember then that this wash will work to dissolve the bottom layer so you have to be quick and only make one pass now the straps around these uh, lumber stacks can either be made from black tape like electrician tape or like I'm doing it here with black paper. This is uh, just some decorative black paper I bought in the shop. And then I just dip that into PVA glue. So I get PVA glue on one side and I just wrap it around the lumber stack. So the shorter stacks, I, they get uh, two straps and the longer stacks gets three or four of these then i just put them into the car i want to transport these uh, lumber stacks on to check what dimensions fits in which combinations and then i glue them together using fast set glue this enables me to load an entire cargo of lumber stacks at once at the sawmill and then in the other end at the carpentry for instance I can just offload it so I think keeping cargos on the layout is uh, great if you can have have them good looking and you know not taking up too much space so if you run, run like 40 cars with this then well it might be a bit too much to have on the layout but if you run like a 50 scenario like i have here with one two cars it's uh, not a problem then this works out real well starting in the 60s uh, 70s uh, they started to make plastic wrap around the lumber stacks with uh, brand print on and there is a, a web page where you can download and print they have the guy who's been doing this has uh, made an extensive collection of uh, different sawmills and brands of sawed lumber where you just can print out and glue to whatever you want you can either have styrofoam in this case i'm using 12 millimeter plywood here but you can also have like 10 millimeter mdf then just check what the length of planks uh, you want to create stacks from cut that to length and then just apply glue on these uh, blocks of wood or blocks of styrofoam or whatever you decided to go for for this i'm using a wide flat brush and the glue i'm using is a pva glue or wood glue and i just cut a piece off this uh, printed paper then i apply new glue on the sides and fold the paper down like this same thing in the short ends yeah and this is um, in combination with the balsa wood where i've added also straps made from black plastic tape and this uh, fits excellent for instance on a either bulkhead car or a flatbed as here now these type of loads typically go up to a carpentry where they make something from the planks and let's go back to uh, cg trader and download a set called cargo 
3. This uh, set contains pallets and crates. And why not? Our carpenter is making wooden pallets. The pallets you see here are Euro pallets, but uh, this set also includes pallets common on the US market, like 48 by 40 pallets or 72 by 40. This is the 48 by 40. Very common size. Yeah, looks like this. Now, uh, the same process with these as the lumber stacks. We're using this uh, three colors, flat yellow, white and burnt umber and use the same proportions and paint your pallets. Once the pallets have been painted, they can be glued together using facet glue into stacks like this or cargoes. And again, add straps using black plastic tape. I also printed and painted that pallet jack and yeah, it turned out pretty good. So this guy is struggling with the pallets on the front side of the carpentry. And this load is going to end customer somewhere along the line. Now, another thing I have on my layout is something I call smart storage for bulk material. They can either be built using strip styrene. This is from Evergreen, but I found lately in the shops that they're out of stock, both of this and the Northeastern scale lumber profiles. And it has been the case for more than a year now. So I've given that up. I'm instead 3D printing all of this and it's a, a bit of shame. I like to work with wood, but if there's not anything to buy in the shop, then we'll have to 3D print it. And there is a set also on CG Trader for bulk material and uh, these type of uh, smart storage are available there as well. So both the profiles and the substitute for the Northeastern scale lumber panel. Now there is one thing missing when you print the wooden panel and that is the wooden grain. And again, to make these, I use a, a 120 grit sanding paper. So I'm just like scratching or engraving patterns of wooden grain into the sides of this uh, printed sheet and then I paint it in a kind of dark brown acrylic paint. You can see that these uh, 3D printed items are really soaking the paint in so are really easy to paint and the paint sticks like glue to the surface. If you like, you can dry brush a brighter shade of brown also to enhance that wooden texture or wooden grain. So basically, otherwise the assembly is the same. So you combine this with um, the beams into storage facilities. And the good thing with these uh, storage facilities is that they can store up to six car cargoes in each. So even if you're running quite long trains with bulk materials like coal in this case, you can easily store all of that uh, offloaded bulk cargo into one, two or three of these uh, storages. And they look uh, nice on the layout as well. So it's, uh, I think it increases the playability with the, the model railroad a lot. Especially if you combine this with a car card and way bill operating system, then you have all the pieces in place. So this is what it looks like. I glue this uh, storage here. And then I put in one, two, three yeah into it and then when the train arrives with empty cars i just insert these into the cars i have a standoff in the middle of each car so i can just push one side and the other side goes up and i can just pull the cargo out so now i I'm, this train is departing from the harbor where they transport in the coal by ship and then it goes up to the local depot, or the engine facility, where I offload the coal into these uh, storages. 
and then the train goes back empty down to the harbor to collect more coal. So, but these uh, smart storages can be used for gravel, uh, uh, wooden sawdust and wood scraps and yeah, whatever you have that you're transporting on your layout. All right, so <laughs> there you have it. Everything from, from timber loading to sawmill and to ready-made product and all ready uh, for you to put together and transit on your layout. Uh, and all the links, uh, both to the graphic, which you can print out on your, uh, on your paper printers and the 3D models we can print on your 3D printer is available in the video description below. So uh, if you don't have the in-video links enabled, <laughs> you have the links there. So, And if you not yet have subscribed to the channel, subscribe and on it, label that little bell and you will get a notification once next get video gets published. And did you know that this channel is totally dependent on the patrons supporting it? So if you have use for the information uh, provided on the channel or just like to watch the content, <laughs> please su support the channel by becoming Patreon. Get over to Patreon, set up a support account there from you know, like one, two dollars per month or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And again, a big thank you for watching. See you in the next video. <music>